If you guys don't like this demo, you can thank John, because this was his idea. All right, so what John wanted to know is how do you make those pots have those little straw next to them? So, so we're gonna do. We're gonna make a nice contemporary style vase with a nice straw finish. You mean the aces? Exactly. Or maybe one. Thanks, John. One so this is gonna be a water and then put them in your garden and glaze. And use them then and all. This is gonna be a two part deal actually because because of that, I want to finish this piece in the clay. There's a story that goes with it. So years ago, well, not years ago, but throughout the years, I guess, um, everybody's always asked, you know, they always discount pottery as not being art, just a craft. And that discussion always seems to die down to the fact people say that art, you know, you hang it on the wall, it doesn't have a purpose. Pottery all has a use. So sometimes it's nice to make pottery that's completely useless. Then it's art, right? There you go. Yeah, most of my art is useless. So it's one thing to have a piece that fries on you when it's an accident. I really hate that when people say, oh, well, look, now it's art. No, it's an accident. It's not art. If you do it on purpose, then it's art. And sorry to me now that my parents called me a word of art. Neither of my kids were hurt, but I guess. <laughs> At least from my perspective. My parents called me the normal one, but then they laughed. In a weird way. <laughs> oh, hello there. It's my ladies. The lady, late keys. I don't know if I'm on me a lady can strut like a middle food. Yeah. But now you should get join us, Jane. Yeah, now Virginia's here, so now you're really busted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so up to now, everything's the same as everything I've taught you. Center opens up to four. So now we're starting to come up with the walls. So you got to have a plan. How you open, how you center, all that based on your finished shape. You're going to do a really wide piece. But you're going to have a wide center. It's going to be fairly narrow and tall and cylindrical. It's going to be centered fairly, fairly tight. He just makes everything look so easy right there with his massive piece of clay. It wasn't massive. It was only like five pillows. Is it hard or easy, Don? I did tell you. Piece of cake. You can see, that's what he always said. Now, so it's like, how easy it is. Okay, my hands are not small. I'll give you that. And you don't have horrible arthritis. Naturally, I do. Don't I? Uh, if you want to make excuses for yourself to not be bad, you can come up with bullying in it. Or you could just do it. I put in where you should nothing have it. So this clay, this is the BBX. It's a little stiffer right now. Um, all our clays are starting to, starting to age. It's starting to be a little stiffer. So mm -hmm. you might have to recondition them like I showed you how to add water to them and recondition them, get them softer if you need them that way. Otherwise, you can use the soup that we call studio blend. Do you think we'll see system in the sea? Now this latest batch was unduly so. Not this latest batch. You can't find anything more than four inches tall with that stuff. <laughs> the inner feeling. They can find that. They can stay your end because you didn't know what it's there and feel like. Then. So you guys saw how, how wide it was when I first started, right? So you do that gather choke pull and that whole cylinder starts to come in tighter and tighter and tighter. Now, when you're doing a straw piece, you've got to resolve your bottom section first. You've got to leave plenty of thickness up here because that's going to have to get choked pretty tight. If you get that too thin up there, 
you're not going to be able to choke that. It's not going. It's going to just want to fold. So, so it's not going to want to choke in. So you'll choke, pull, choke, pull, and as you go up to that. I'm going to try this a little more refined, so it's going to be a little taller yet. Do the really serious pull. Move some clay. Last one of these I did ended up looking like a cherry. Your stem was so thin? No, it was really weird. So it was in the gas kill, and I did it um, almost all in the uh, salsa red. So the body was nice and red. For some reason, the stem of it oxidized. And so I had this green stem with this red body. So it actually came out really cool. Well, because it was so narrow. It... Yeah, it was probably, yeah, it was probably a hard, but it just couldn't breathe. It was probably a weird spot in the kill or something. But, I mean, I was happy with it. It came out cool. You too much clay, you eventually run out of RM. So have any of you ever tried this throwing with the rib? <laughs> Use of the rib, I'm able to spread my pressures more. So I can push in really hard with it, and then that spreads the pressure across the surface. So as I push up and in, it drives it out further. It's not just smoothing it out, or does that first help push the plant a little higher as well? Let me do that, Rick. So it, it pushes it up. So it it's at a slight angle upwardly. So as it pushes in, that's forcing the clay up. So I mean, that's it's kind of a an odd thing. We call it pulling, but when we do a put piece, we're actually pushing around that point. So don't pull the clay up; we push the clay up. Does that make sense? Yeah. I could see it, but we're moving in perfect time. Just kind of like another thing we always say is we slip and score. Actually, we score and slip. But All right. All right. So now got it. One more pull in it for thickness, and then we'll start setting the shape. So the more straight up and down you can keep your cylinder, the better that clay is going to stand. What do you do if you have short arms? If you're legging. <laughs> one of two things. Throw shorter pieces, or if you want to do taller pieces, you have to do with sectional ones. Like when you see me do those sectional pieces. I mean, I don't have the arm weight to do three foot tall pieces with my arm. So I have to do those in sections. So, I mean, no matter who you are, somebody's got a longer arm than you got. And somebody's got a shorter arm. Yeah, right. If we can, can make all the excuses. Yeah. Well, it's like people say, oh, I can't bring that much clay. And it's, I tell people about this lady I knew that when she was doing her residency at the Bray, she was maybe a hundred pounds. I mean, tiny new lady. And she's taking 25 pounds of porcelain and just shoving it all over. So, you learn how to manipulate the clay. You learn how to finesse the clay. Or you don't. Or you circle. That's okay. good. Okay, so now I've got thickness set. So now I'm going to start setting the body. So as the body starts to come out, I'm going to bring it out just a little bit at a time. Yeah, I'm using pressure in and out. I'm pushing out to my hand to make it expand. But I'm also pushing in 
Because what happens when I'm pushing out like that, the clay is expanding. So as the clay is trying to expand, if I don't have pressure on that on the outside, it's going to start to crack. It's going to create stress marks on the outside. Just like when you're trying to choke, as I choke in, the inside of the pot wants to fold up like a curtain. So I have to have pressure on the inside with that. Or choke the little pole, chili pole, to keep that folds straightened out. So the very top of this piece is still pretty thick. Now one thing you'll see that I do, I kind of picked up this habit a long time ago, that when I'm doing really tall pieces like this, see the back of my arm? So see how the back of my arm hits the opposite side of the piece? It actually helps stabilize the wall. I'm kind of going out a little bit, stabilizing it from that side as a pushing over the side so it keeps the whole thing more on center. Dying, did you know you're a head wobbler? Oh. <laughs> no, I... My, my wife used to make so much fun of me for that. And then I've watched a lot of the people that are, you know, especially the Koreans. Um, they they do that. And see, about 50 50 flying feather was to with their mind on like the, I don't think I am, but I wouldn't do like. Yeah, you don't. Until somebody tells you. Good. Cover my hands when I'm doing art back. But get chat. You put it in. Drool. So little bits at a time, you don't want too big of a hurry, but set in your shade. Um, push the clay too hard, too fast. Your little, your little collapse. So when you said modern shape, they would say you talk in like mid century modern or even more recent. Probably even more contemporary than that. Probably even more truly contemporary. Oh yeah, I'm some other artist that did real. And then, uh, like what year? I'd say 90s. 90s current. You'll see a lot of decorative pieces, um, high-end decorative stuff that has a shape similar to what I'm trying to do here. All right, so we choke a little, pull a little. So it sets the line back in. So once the clay is set, I can choke it again. So we're getting to the point now where whenever you're trying to choke a vessel, two things. One is don't get it too thin, like I mentioned earlier. The other is your top rim. If your top rim is uneven, this one's just barely uneven. But if it's significantly uneven, it's going to really be hard to choke. If you're trying to choke something that's uneven at the rim, it's going to want more pressure on one side than the other. And so if you're using equal pressure, it's not going to want to choke evenly. So you'll have to even off your rim to do that. So now it's kind of the tricky part. When I'm starting to choke like this, I'll actually take my hand like this and put it over it and use my fingers so I can have pressure on the inside and the outside with that hand, bringing that rim out. And it's kind of way like this. Intra, kind of. Belling, sorry. So we tighten it over a while. Now I gotta do another pull. So normally when I do these in porcelain, I cheat. 
I throw the stem section separately and attach it because all the stress and stuff I'm doing on it is too much for porcelain. Um, it would make the bottom section collapse if I had the bottom down to the right thickness. Now, it was getting too small for my hands, so now this is my inside. Using a stick to throw is something that just takes a lot of work. I know master potters who've been doing pottery for years and they never use a stick and have like, no, not going to do it. This one's going to need some help. So the body's too neat right here to take that top much more. So I'm going to have to get the things where you come together or not at the same so that actually goes together better. And then, just like in coil building, you can just squish those together. Now, I've added that much clay to the body of it. So what I did, I used the gun, stiffened this part of the body. So this is fairly stiff for here. It's got more stability, so I can continue to work with it. And now, I've got just a little more clay at the top. So you just lightly wet that. And now, I can throw that clay into the body. And is it just because that clay's pretty wet that you don't need to slip and school in? Right. Yeah. I'm just using wet clay to wet clay. So it's just a touch thin right there. So you get a thin spot. You can always do this even when you're curling. If you get a thin spot, you can just take a little pancake of clay, add it to it, and they can back up. Sometimes if you get a bubble, you have to do that. You ever done that for a bubble? No. Yeah, buddy? <laughs> So if as you pop a bubble, then you got a void there. You can just take a little pinch of clay and add it to it. So there we go. I threw that. Now I've added that clay to the body. So now I can continue to work with it. Maybe your students never get mobile. Uh, they're probably perfect wedgers every one. Oh, I just leave the big thing. <laughs> you just leave the big bubble in there. I don't win. <laughs> <laughs> And clay use, run out of fresh clay. And yeah, right. Use anything. <laughs> yeah, that. Recycle your own clay at all. You can think So, one thing about it, yeah, you always want to wedge the studio blend for two reasons. One is it stiffens on the outside more than the inside. So, you need to equalize that stiffness. And our pug mail does not vacuum as well as it used to probably no it doesn't have a shutter plate so yesterday we got uh, like this and in studio play oh, it used to be a piece of a wooden a corner of a wooden rib i see the circle now so the other three quarters of this wooden rib are somewhere in this studio play found one what are you saying okay the other half the main the other half the initial there's no the old machine had a strain and plate that only let quarter inch or less through. Yeah, the Bailey one is one of the best, but Bailey doesn't make them anymore. No, and they can't even say you fix your part. No, they won't even support them anymore. That's angering. But also, I will say the old machine was a pain in my butt because all the tools that landed, she just stayed in the machine, and then once a year we had to disassemble the entire thing and clean them out. Oh, that's a full day job cleaning. <laughs> Been there. Five down there, they come on door. So I didn't get it stiff enough down here at the bottom. So if you guys find yourself using an eat gun, 
The hair dryer is not such a big deal. The heat gun, however, will melt the bat. So if you're using the heat gun on your pot close to the bat, you need to drag a, a bead of water down at the bottom see what's going on there. That'll keep the heat gun from melting the bat. Richard and I already talked about that. I'll need to that. Because he likes to do this kind of thing. Have you ever done that uh, um, using that bead gun and then continuing to throw it so it looks like cracks? Well, yeah. Once a uh, piece of the outside that I did that on, I actually, um, you must have been gone that day. I had never been yeah. gone. Well, we it was my night class. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that for a demo for, for the class. I, no, I can do it for I I banded some um, underglaze on it. Then I used the heat gun and then stiffened the outside edge and then I expanded it and made a nice cracky piece. I should have used darker colors of the underglaze. A little looked a lot cooler middle. I thought I got it stiff enough, but I was just pushing my luck. Stirring my life. That thing's not actually running it as it looks like. It's in. It's like in a melting. I'd ask the, if the sword put it set down. That's what we run into so I was like this, I like this. When you all the stress on the top, it was to throw the bottom out. So I have to stiffen up the top part to be able to leave the bottom part cool. And I added the ego as even as I thought. Oh, we just have to finesse. Moral of the story is, but it's pretty forgiving, seem to me, the whole are. You got patience. And the skittles. And the skittles of September. This is what I do all the time, porcelain. I have to resolve a part and work it some more, and resolve a part some more. Fishing. Deep. We'll see where you feel like you were at. We're in just for John. Let's see what's wrong. So the mouse just choking the phone and choking the phone. You did. The range started to throw it. It all pointed out to show you guys the new play then. You gotta get off. What? Well, when you can make your handles, there's dyes in there, you make the handle, and of course. Levels and foyers.
For this final film, they would act for his own reaction if you. Why is that? What blasted? It's such a bug. And they were at new sticking points, old you know. I feel in the bike. No. We've had this. I know. I'm not set up. Plus, you gotta find bonds. Well, me, me, just See you, Royal Dolphin, which grinds the lock and uses the filler in the clay, which is why Wetwick calls Royal Adult Brain. Yeah. I'll be cutting that out of the video. So in the rest of the world, we call that grog. That's what grog is. You just take fire, clay, write it down sand, and add it to it. So when you do that with a porcelain, you get sick on a matching clay. So you've got a grog that doesn't show up in the finished product. Like this stuff, you can see all dark sand in it. So the tighter you get, the more your unevenness starts to show up. So while I throw against the stick, and clue more that unevenness. I want to behave there. Cheat seat. It's probably the company sitting so close. Yeah, good. Remember when we talked about quelling moss? And doing candoli? Both of my dogs, I think. Excuse me, Pat has a play that I had those two spots together. Cheer it while we're still. the map
So I'm doing something like this. You see where I stiffened it up a little. I go back and just my spine to go to just lightly moisten where I'm working. So I don't have jerks of water going down. That's how it gets me. So yeah, like Virginia was asking about, when I say contemporary, I mean, this is like all matter to design stuff. You see a lot of this stuff done in just plain of light. Yeah, it's like a whole big behavior. That saved the Anastropes, rib rib, so tool, tapers and rays, freaking help. Then softer rubber ribs. Thought maybe if we get it they're really stiff right there, it will stop doing it. Oh. Two of these left controls, right? We can't do that. No. Me too. I did one, so. The next bit simply out is the feed valve art. Oh, yeah. It's got a good leverage to it. That's the one he's laying the bits there and see. No, it sounds like a boy. Yeah. They tried it, but the light red is weird. They can go. Yeah, yeah Don wanted us to buy that for you. Guys. <laughs> yeah, on I had, I, well, if you look at what I wanted it, or that is, I brought mine in. Okay, Did everybody good. else want it? Don has one, and everyone was jealous. That was no, pretty good. With all of the ones. So that, yeah, that was the other thing we need to talk about the bet. When we're done with it, the dice have to go back in the box, along with the bottom end. They'll go back up the shelf in there. You got news girls. You cannot buy them individually. You have to buy the whole roll out. And this is. I got like 35 bucks for as soon as it is dies. Now, how do you clean this? Oh, send your. How is it, Fred? All right. So, <laughs> if you're ready to clean it, which I mentioned you are. I'll push the release stay, but I'll one lever at the pocket that reduces the pressure, just like you would need the cockpit. Perfect. I'll unscrew the bottom. Yep, that piece. That's perfect. That's the whole point. <laughs> Here it goes. So that, yeah, you, if you don't push the release for the pressure, first you'll never get that off. Because it'll be pushing so hard, and it so didn't want to be correct. So now you just push the rest of the way out. Push it all the way down. No, so go ahead, go ahead and run it all the way down. Well, no, you'll have to just switch yeah, pre go them, but then it, it goes real fast. Once you get all the way out there, just pull that off. And then you can just rework the clay. You don't leave any on the wall, so the. It fills. We're to add like a rubber plan in it, in this it went. So now, right. So now that whole two piece she has in it. So this should. Well, it will. You can set the set screws on it so that it won't. 
but I always kind of do it loosely like that so that you take that off and put it with that album to yeah. try not to get the other part. Yeah, no, I like that idea. Yeah, and it wasn't hard, you know. We do have three primers here, so we can dies for you if there's shapes that aren't in the box that you're interested in for either of the print. Yeah, because you'll see some of these dies here are acrylic. They're not pillar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Just keeps going tighter and tighter. <laughs> What tool is that you're using now? Just the end part of the tool. Okay. I don't know who I taught this trick to the other day. But who's got a wire kit? A wire? A uh, wire tool. Yeah, I should have. So I showed you guys how to de lock, right? Yeah. Right. Some people find this method. Yeah, you showed me. I was you actually. Yeah. Some people prefer this method. I don't know. I'm, I was just using the old to this hand. But if you take your wire jewel like this, get it out real small. And actually, it's. Oh, right now. You like that? You your wire tool would cut. That's a toilet brush would fit. Now, I know the bottle breath, so the other one that we had. I like do this. This is fun. We don't like this. Oh, did you do that again? No, because <laughs> no, I didn't get. Oh no! <laughs> no, no, we don't said. Huh? We don't said. We split. I did the split here. I'm Smith. Uh, modern art. So now it's art. Well, when you do that on purpose, you can actually say it. And it is art. You let me that on purpose. That's, that it was intentional. So. And 